accusation of rape can disrupt entire communities, families and relationships. But like we saw unfold in the small town of Steubenville, Ohio, it can really disrupt an entire nation. The term rape culture is something a lot of teenagers have never even heard of until now. In fact, they're living in it. Eyewitness News reporter Leslie Rubin is live in the studio with her special report exploring the world teenagers are now subjected to and might not even realize. Leslie. Rick, the term rape culture can be a tough concept to grasp. And while on paper, it means the images, language, and everyday doings that validate rape. It's easier to see it for ourselves. Children see it, you see it, teenagers see it every day. Jokes, songs, pictures, and stories that can suggest the persistence of rape is just the way things are. But how do you as a parent play a role in ingraining in your child's mind that's not the way it is. We sat down with teenagers and experts to help explain. A quick glance in the images are everywhere. Sex sells, right? But what about the message that comes with it? That's pathetic. The fact that we in this country are buying that. We sat down with a group of 17 and 18 year olds. For many, it was the first time they say they've talked openly and freely about taboo topics like rape. It's happening more and more now and it's being excused more and more and girls are being portrayed more as the bad person like like she was the one who brought it on. With no topic off limits, the teams yeah. talked about their frustrations with growing up in a sex-fueled society. What we've created in society is that, you know, sexual activity, it's like something everyone wants. We've defined sexual activity as something that's, you know, really cool. If you date someone now for like two months, you know, the first question people will ask you are like, oh, have you guys had sex yet? And it's like, uh, no, you know, we haven't. And they, they think that's like, Weird. Also for many, it was the first time they've heard the term rape culture, but they were very familiar with the aspects that define it. Popular music artist Rick Ross may rap about guns and drugs, but in a recent song called You Don't Even Know It, these lyrics stand out from the rest. Put Molly all in her champagne. She ain't need no. I took her home and I enjoyed that. Molly is a form of pure MDMA, a commonly used date rape drug. Like he's recording this music as if he's proud of it. But perhaps the story that's gained more of their attention happened just a few hours up the interstate. Who has heard about the case in Steubenville, Ohio? Those boys in Steubenville knew, to a certain point, had to know that what they were doing was wrong. Two teenage boys found guilty in March of raping a 16 year old girl from West Virginia at a party. Evidence of their crime plastered on social media sites for all to see. After the rape, the kids at school began calling her a slut. And that was one of the things that made my eyes open. Like she just went through this She's a rape victim. Their focus not on those two star football players who gained national attention, but for the unnamed victim. Her life turned upside down. You don't even talk about the victim. You just talk about the defendants and how they feel in their lives and how their lives are ruined. There is, you know, no immediate solution to the problem. If parents get more involved, that does help. And she's right, explains Dr. Bill Mullet, head counselor for Kanawha County Schools. Actions as a teenager are largely based on what you were taught in your preteen years by your parents. The communications that need to take place uh, have to start early in a young person's life. Mullet says the earlier, the better. Separate being a parent from being a friend and let your child know they are going to be be monitored. They need to stick their nose into the into the lives of their kids. This is something that they feel that I as a parent feel strongly about and feel the need to talk. And they'll say, oh, come on, Dad, back off, let it, let it go, you're old fashioned. You can just say, I know, I'm old fashioned, that's too bad. Uh, but this is what I this is what I need to say to you. I don't know what I don't know how to solve that. Is it to educate more? Is it to try to stop sex early? I, I have no idea. I'm 17 years old, but it's scaring me that it that is part of our culture. That is our culture now. The teens also voiced their anger that the victim, usually a girl, is given labels like slut. Also part of the rape culture, a practice called victim blaming. Sometimes guys will take alcohol as an advantage of girls saying, well, if I get them drunk, then I can get them to do what they want to do without having to worry about anything. They won't remember it and that's an easier way for me to get what I want. 
Rape used to be thought of as the masked attacker who strikes in the middle of the night, but now it's happening to young girls who may not even be aware they are the victims of a crime. So we have to make an example to everyone that, you know, rape is a big deal. Rape is not about, you know, you had a bad night, you know, it's bad, made some bad decisions and it's over. It's not about that. It's about you changed someone's life forever. Education from an early age. Don't be afraid to talk to your child about a touchy subject. Just ask these kids. People aren't getting the right message. And that's what I think our parents should be the first to do, is to make us get in, in, implant those ethics into us. According to the National Center for Injury Prevention and Control, a 2011 survey of high school students found that 11.8% of girls and 4.5% of boys from grades 9 through 12 reported that they were forced to have sexual intercourse at some time in their lives. Reporting live in the studio, Leslie Rubin, Eyewitness News.